Good morning. <clears throat> and welcome to service today on this Christmas Eve morning. It's exciting and glad to see everyone here. Um, I have a few announcements to make uh, for you and they're most li mostly all listed in the bulletin there so you can look at those. Um, uh, just draw attention to tonight's candlelight and communion service. It starts at 6.30 with the music at Prelude and um, the call to worship begins at 7. Uh, a reminder that the financial records will close uh, at the end of the for the end of the year and in bold there in your bulletin it says that all of your gifts need to be received by 5 o'clock on Friday the 29th or postmarked by Saturday the 30th there. Um, and we're going to continue today taking the offerings that are special, the Christmas store offering and the Christmas joy offering. And then looking ahead, which we must at the end of 2023, on January 4th, uh, we're going to remove all the de decorations. You know, I don't really like that time because I, like, <laughs> I like having them up. But anyway, January 4th, Mary's, I think, is right at 10 a.m. in the morning. And then on Sunday, the 28th, which is at the end of January, there's a congregational meeting and a soup luncheon, which we all look forward to. Um, today, we remember in prayer several uh, from our congregation and friends. So uh, when we have our prayers, uh, remember Mike Riley, Chancel Woogie, Cindy Present's son David, and Linda Crate and her family, family and loved ones of Ellen Bennett Vest, Tammy Craft's friend Carol Kaler, Anna Smith, Jim Taylor, Mary Childress, Estelle Dobbins, Nicholas Keeling, Jason Hammond, Herb Miller, Patty Walker Jordan, and Fran Hart. So those are who we're going to remember today and wish well. Also, this morning's service has a chronological progression, and it's from the angel coming to Mary through Mark's version of Jesus' birth. So the order of worship is a little different this week, so you might notice that. So that would be something to look at. And if there are no other announcements, are there any? Well, please stand and greet one another. Hello. Oh, sit down.
declared, my soul magnifies the Lord. Shall we in worship magnify and glorify our Lord Jesus Christ? Bethlehem, man of Nazareth, Christ of God. With Mary, we treasure the stories of your birth and ponder over these things. May the celebration of your birth, both in this place and in our social circles, bring glory and praise to your name. Amen. Like the fourth candle, the candle of love, remembering these words from the first letter of John. God showed his love for us by sending his only Son into the world that we might have life through him. This is what love is it is not that we have loved God, 
but that God has loved us and sent his son by the means of, means of which our sins are forgiven. Let us pray together. Lord God, knowing how you loved us, help us to love one another. Even though we cannot see you, if we love one another, others will see your love in us and through us. Amen. Shall we bow our heads in our prayer for illumination? Open the gates of our minds and hearts, O Lord, that the words from Scripture seal themselves upon our life and become our guiding light. Amen. This reading comes from the book of Luke in the first chapter. In the sixth month of the pregnancy of Elizabeth, wife of Zechariah, God sent the angel Gabriel to a town in Galilee named Nazareth. He had a message for a young woman promised in marriage to a man named Joseph, who was a descendant of King David. Her name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Peace be with you. The Lord is with you and has greatly blessed you. Mary was deeply troubled by the angel's message, and she wondered what his words meant. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. God has been gracious to you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will make him a king as his ancestor David was, and he will be the king of the descendants of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary said to the angel, I am a virgin. How can this be? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and God's power will rest upon you. For this reason, the child will be called Son of God. Remember your relative Elizabeth? It is said that she cannot have children, but yet she herself is now six months pregnant, even though she's very old. For there is nothing that God cannot do. I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it happen to me as you have said. And the angel left her.
You may be seated. God's love for humanity has been revealed to us in the first coming of Jesus. Love incarnate, the word made flesh, offered us all a new way of life. Yet we often stumble on our path toward righteousness. Trusting in the Lord's mercy, let us seek God's forgiveness. O God of compassion, we acknowledge the inconsistency of our discipleship. Whether done through mindless neglect or willful resistance, forgive our failures to follow Jesus' example. May our singing of the season's glorias deepen our faith and renew our commitment to Jesus' ways. In the birth of Jesus, God reconciled the world to God's self. Celebrate God's incarnation knowing that your sins are forgiven.
Our scripture reading is actually from Matthew. I misdirected you, I'm sorry. So our reading comes from Matthew chapter 1, and it is Matthew's version of the birth of Jesus. This is how the birth of Jesus took place. His mother Mary was engaged to Joseph, but before they were married, she find, found out that she was going to have a baby by the Holy Spirit. Joseph was a man who always did what was right. But he did not want to disgrace Mary publicly, so he made plans to break the engagement privately. While he was thinking about this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, descendant of David, do not be afraid to take Mary to be your wife, for it is by the Holy Spirit that she has conceived. She will have a son, and you will name him Jesus, because he will save all people from their sins. Now all of this happened in order to make come true what the Lord had said through the prophet. A virgin will become pregnant and have a son. And he will be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So when Joseph woke up, he married Mary, as the angel of the Lord had told him to do. But he had no sexual relations with her before she gave birth to her son. And Joseph named him Jesus.
this reading is from Luke 1, 46, verses 46 to 55, and it's called the Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham, and to his descendants forever. 